Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, another presentation. I hope that uh, for young researchers, young teachers, it will be very important, especially in developing countries where research activities are not so great. So many young researchers, I noticed that they don't get enough scopes or learning. So this slide uh, is the part one. I am from University of Dhaka. Uh, currently, I'm working uh, at Osaka University. So basically, uh, in this part, uh, research method, uh, the basic uh, within a few slides I'll try to mention. Uh, in future uh, videos, you'll find uh, a bit more on other topics. So research is a systematic work. So you just can't get anything quickly, easily. Understanding the nature of the problem is uh, very important uh, and uh, you need to review re literature to understand how others have approached or deal the problem so if you want to solve any problem you must know uh, what are the existing solutions so that based on their solutions and uh, their limitations or constraints you can plan for a new guideline and do something uh, from the uh, existing works so based on that, uh, a strong review, a literature review from the top journals, top conference papers or related original books, you can get the information. After that, you try to propose or develop or do some new experiments in some cases or uh, sometimes to collect the data in an organized and controlled manner so that after some work, you can uh, arrive at valid de decisions. So whatever results you got, you have to analyze in depth. I'll discuss a little bit more on those issues. And finally, you draw conclusions. And in the conclusions or in the discussions or analysis, you have to uh, make generalizations of the findings and results. By generalization, I mean where why and how it fits or works where it fails why it fails how it fails you need to find based on this some constraints and limitations of your work and you must write these kind of things don't write too much otherwise reviewers will find it uh, not good sometimes so but anyway you have to write smartly so that if a reader reads your paper and find some genuine constraints or limitations based on this he or she can find a new direction for research so this is very important and when we do uh, research we need to try uh, on diverse and extensive data sets or samples not a small data a small sample you need to check what about the other researchers on the similar field what is the limit of the data set what is the pattern now so based on this, we have to decide. For example, if you uh, think about 10 years before video-based human activity recognition, we had only 10 classes, 10 different kinds of actions by 10 or 20 people. That, that was good. Okay. But now it is not possible in video-based human activity recognition because most of the data sets in the last five, seven years are based on YouTube genuine uh, human activities. And millions of videos are used for those data sets. So, I mean, that is very important. Then finally, based on your limitations or constraints, you try to find genuine future research. research. Regarding research, uh, I mean, after uh, formulating a, a, a algorithm or methods or a strategies or pipeline, you need to do experiment. You need data. But the point is that in some cases we can produce data or collect data for our experiments from real life samples. But in some cases we cannot get enough uh, uh, real life data. That definitely uh, we need to go for simulated data or artificial data if real data is difficult. But we must do our research on extensive and diverse ranges of data. I mean, for example, if you look at the human face recognition, we know that face recognition is very easy. Even mobile phone can do that. 
So, and if uh, uh, you are a Facebook user, definitely, uh, I think. So, on that case, you know that how easy it is nowadays. But what about, uh, I mean, diverse background? Can we do uh, face recognition easily? So, that is the main point. And what about the accuracy? Like, uh, can we go for 100% accurate face recognition methods? If we go for 100% ac accuracy, then you need to think, can we do it faster or real time or without using much more, I mean, computation processing and so on. So always there are scopes. Then simulated data. So I'll give you some examples. For example, gait recognition, gait means like walking pattern of human being. So if you are not familiar, I just tell you that by the walking pattern from the video, we can recognize who the person is. It's a kind of biometric, just like fingerprint and others. But of course, accuracy is not that good, but it's still, it's okay. So now for gate recognition, we need th thousands of data. For example, in Osaka University in our lab, we have data set more than 70,000 people's data are collected from different cameras. So we have. Now, one of the challenge is uh, of gate recognition, gate analysis is occlusion if partial body is occluded by something else. So do we have occluded data from many people? No, because it's very difficult to get so far nothing. So that's why one example this is done that you can create artificial data. No large scale gate data set with occlusion, so make it. So for example, you can take 10,000 subjects data and then you artificially put some kind of bar by which 30%, 40%, and 50% degrees of occlusion, and in different ways, like horizontally or vertically or randomly, so that you can create different kinds of patterns and like this. So if you look at this slide, I mean, of course, this gray it means actually black, but for visualization, you put it gray. So you can say half of this is not visible. So you can say that I am walking across a bar or pillar, so some parts of the bodies are missing. And this is another pattern and so on so if you see that there are different likes like bottom side or static top sides are not visible left side or right side and so on and random data. so through this way if you do not have any data or no difficult or challenging and you go for uh, artificially uh, data creation so next point is presenting the data present and analyze and discuss. Most of the uh, papers from young researchers we found, uh, I mean, or at least I found, I noticed more than thousand cases uh, in the last uh, decade, for example, that they just present what the results are. Like if the graph is this or the, if the table is, they mention that, okay, we got this, we get this, this is the result, this is the findings, finish. But they do not analyze why did you get this result is it valid is it reasonable if yes why how if not why how these are very important and do you compare with state of the art other methods yes i understand that if you go for the state of the art like top methods in the world definitely your work should be for a longer period and extensive and good quality. Sometimes it's not possible in undergraduate and master's level or in developing countries. So what to do? At least you go for some kind of discussions, mention and uh, some kind of analytical way so that you can uh, uh, give some kind of new findings, new ideas, new solutions or new thinking, new knowledge. So this is very important. So analysis is important and discussions are is very very important so you need to analyze explain interpret the results you need to discuss and try to generalize where it fails how it fails and why it fails and uh, uh, vice versa and through this way you can find the good points and bad points and based on this you can mention one or two genuine future scopes like, don't say that in future we will do it. This is a political statement. Political leaders will always say we will do these, that, these, that. But no genuine guidelines for that. Okay? So based on your research, based on your reality, you show genuine future skills. And then finally, you conclude the paper. Conclude properly. Do not just 
repeat the abstract what you have written okay or uh, something like that finally write down the research report we can write in different way like thesis book format journal or transactions or manuscripts paper conference or workshop proceedings and so in some cases so two pages extended abstract in some area just abstract are okay with proper citation or bibliography for example i'm working on computer vision pattern recognition imaging area in that domain abstract or abstract extended abstracts are i mean almost invalid i mean is cvpr is ccb i mean top rated conferences or those minimum page lengths are 10 pages or eight pages a single column not double column so like that so that's why it varies but based on your field you can decide where you go and usually people write in many cases by ms word but it is you know uh, i mean not good try to write in latex by which you can make an extend format and different journals and conferences including ieee scm and others they have latex templates so that is much easier and if you want to learn then just google install these and go for an editor and then you just enjoy how good it is so i'd like to recap the basic steps of research problem identification this is the most important point in our life when we are in trouble in families when we are in trouble we do not find the exact problem and then we remain in the problem because we don't have any solutions even if we try differently so this is very important and reviewing information whatever enough you found rethink uh, reevaluate and then propose something uh, i mean uh, expert do experiments data collection and so on finally analysis is important i mentioned in details about the analysis part and draw the conclusions and generalizations thanks a lot uh, i hope that we will work harder uh, maybe the hardest so that we can develop uh, the world and to develop us if we are developed then basically we are contributing to the community and uh, these are from different material sources i cannot recall from what and how and uh, advices from different researchers and uh, in future uh, lectures i'll try to cover literature review paper writing problems how to solve because this is very important sometimes you have something like you cooked something and you serve the food but it is not properly served so that's why it's a problem okay many restaurants they serve ordinary food but serving is excellent they charge three four times money you know that so similarly your writing paper writing is very important i'll try to mention those how to review a paper this is also important especially for uh, senior researchers uh, so that we can help and volunteer the conference and journals uh, to develop and how to select a, a reasonable journals or conferences uh, from the crap journals around so these are the uh, now few points i hope i'll try to cover uh, during this break thank you so much